One of the big debates over in Loudoun County is about critical race theory. That's not a debate anymore. Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis put an end to it. One of the many things he's done to stay ahead of the curve in what's happening in our country and our society, and especially in Florida. Governor, welcome back. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Doing okay. It's a Friday. Yeah, I mean, that, that issue that we're handling in loud and, and been handled almost on a daily basis, why did you feel as though you had to get in front of it? What, what really made you think this is, this is something that I got to stop before it gets roots? Well, you were seeing it uh, sprout up across the country, and you were seeing it sprout up in some of these woke corporations as well. And, you know, we felt very strongly that our tax dollars should not be going uh, to teaching these theories that are not based in fact uh, and that really divide people and is effectively a form of state-sanctioned racism. So uh, we had huge support uh, in doing that, people from all walks of life. And uh, I think you're seeing that throughout the country. And so I know that there's still some people on the far left who are trying to justify this, uh, but I think you're seeing um, Americans really come together and say, we do not want this in our schools. Yeah. Governor, I know you're sending law enforcement to patrol the border because the vice president and the president haven't gone down there, so states are having to act alone. And you're so, it's very kind of you to help. You're not the only state, but to help those folks are border patrol agents who need all the help they can get. Ralph Norman is a Republican from South Carolina. He's a congressman. And he was in, he was, uh, he was grilling uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security. It was the House Homeland Security meeting yesterday morning, and he was testifying. And he was asking him, why isn't the vice president going down there? Listen to this. I'm reclaiming my time. You made the statement that my question was unfair. I'm making the statement that your comments are just words, and they're very unfair. I ask you a simple question, and I would like for you just to answer simply. Uh, is it, does it make sense for the leaders of the free world to go and to, to talk to and see what's going on at the border? I am the Secretary of Homeland Security, and it is my responsibility um, uh, to manage uh, the border at the direction of the president and the vice president. And I have visited the border on multiple occasions. The vice president served as the attorney general of a border state of California, and she is quite familiar uh, with the situation on the border. I but she's laughing her. So your officers, Governor, are going to go to the border before the vice president, who is basically the border czar. Well, the sad thing about this is, is the federal government has just completely abdicated its responsibility. We had policies under President Trump that were working. The border was under control. And Biden comes in and they knowingly uh, revoked all these policies, knowing what was going to happen. And now they're just showing really a callous disregard. And it's not just those border communities that are being affected. Obviously, they are. Uh, one of the things we're dealing with in places, particularly some of our rural counties, is the meth. And it's all coming from across the southern border. The cartels are absolutely eating Biden and Harris's lunch. And the fact that she won't even go down there. Uh, but look. What Greg Abbott's doing, Doug Ducey, they're stepping up and filling a void where the federal government has left this lack of leadership. And so when they asked for support, uh, I felt it was the right thing to do, that uh, Florida would be there to help them out. They've helped us out in the past when we've had uh, emergencies and natural disasters. But right. the idea that we're even having to do this is really a sad commentary yeah. on the lack of federal leadership we're seeing. And the attorney general of the great state of Florida uh, supports you in this move. And uh, she pointed out yesterday, 21 Floridians die every day because of opioids and that's why it's a crisis and we need to stop them from coming in the country um, governor if you you've been in Washington you're there in Florida and Tallahassee um, explain the politics if you would this has been your business for a while explain the politics on how somebody at the White House thought it was a good idea to put her in charge of this and not have her go and see it with her own two eyes I think that they, they realize it's a disaster, and I think they think if, if she goes, it's just going to highlight it even more. But I'll tell you, not showing up, not taking decisive action is ultimately, right. it's the bad policy response. Ultimately, politically, it's not going to work. I mean, people are fed up with this. They want to see action. This is the federal government's responsibility, and you have all of us in the states now mm -hmm. having to step up and do their job for them. Just want to point this out. When you were in Congress, then Senator Kamala Harris went to Homestead to point out that there were kids kids coming across the border being placed in facilities like this and she was concerned about their condition what happened to that concern 
It's amazing how, how things seem to change based on uh, wh where they're sitting. But, uh, of course, they were just using that to try to attack Donald Trump. That was the only reason they were doing it. That's why they've done these policies, because they think Trump is bad. If he did it, it must be bad. They've got to do the opposite. That's not good leadership. I mean, good leadership is doing what's best for the country. And obviously, she is failing in that regard, and so is the president. I know you just recently signed a bill to give police dogs priority medical help. Tell us more about this. Well, we're actually, you guys are getting the preview because I'm going to uh, transition out of this interview, do the press conference. We're here at the St. John's County Sheriff's Office. We'll be signing the bill probably in the next 30 this? minutes. And yeah, we will. And what it does is we have our, these these canines that are that are on the front lines protecting us. Uh, they perform valuable functions. And yet under Florida law, if they're injured in the line of duty, they could not be transported in with by EMT personnel like like an officer would be able to. And this bill changes that this gives them that emergency, those emergency services. They're going to be able to be transported. And, and hopefully that will be enough to potentially uh, save some of the canine lives because I mean you'll have some of these assailants they'll try to shoot the dogs and they'll they'll right. do a lot of really bad things so we've really I think leaned in and we also in Florida we've got a number of great organizations uh, that are involved in, in training dogs we have we have organizations that train dogs uh, for for service members suffering from PTSD and a whole host of things so we're really proud of what Florida does uh, to stand by our four-legged friends all right and you're gonna be signing Special. that bill very right. shortly um, Governor, let's change from a news channel to the Golf Channel. Yesterday, <laughs> uh, you actually posted your three-year-old son, Mason, uh, and people love to golf in Florida, but usually they start when they're like 30 or 40. He's three, and he can really drive that ball. What did you post as the uh, caption under Mason's <laughs> picture there? Well, I said the guy is three years old and he's already got a better swing than his old man does. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm somebody I work at it when I can. I'm a, you know, I have a baseball background, so I used to swing. But but he is just and, and my my daughter, Madison, is really good, too. They they just have great hand eye coordination, great club head speed. But he is obsessed with hitting golf balls and baseballs. He does right. it all day long. And I think you see in that. I mean, he's hitting <laughs> he's yeah, that's natural. like a nine iron. <laughs> he's hitting that 50, 60 yards right. as a three-year-old so kid and he's got nice straight maybe a little bit of a fade and so uh, I think he's got a great future if that's right. what he wants to do you know it's amazing is that he has no rituals the ball goes down he just hits it you know people are always getting settings uh, getting set but it's no surprise really because you met your wife on the driving range didn't you and isn't Casey a great a really good golfer she, she is. She's a great athlete. She was a college equestrian scholarship. And um, we were just happened to be at the driving range next to each other. She's whacking balls. Where's Mason? Here, come here, buddy. Uh, she's whacking balls. I got it right there here. It um, and so, uh, yeah. Show them how you hit the ball. Show them. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a little good. bit early that for him, but, um, but yeah, so we did through. that, and, and we've, it's been something that we've enjoyed together. And these kids, I think, um, really uh, uh, are fortunate that they've got, they've got a mother who's uh, very good-looking and very athletic, and so I think they're getting everything <laughs> well, from her side. There's right. your whole family right there. That, that's good. You can write off this uh, appearance. <laughs> hey, right. Oh, Madison, wave. Wave to the camera. Hi, Madison. Now, now, Madison, yeah. Madison, now Madison, when, when I had a chance to spend the day with you, Governor, the, one of the first things that's happened, your kids are running around the house in control, having fun but you were able to show me Madison's swing take a look at oh, this swing cool. watch you missed the first one but you hit like five in a row uh, you're making the most of the governor's wow. mansion <laughs> so this is an athletic family well, yeah, no, we, we, we <laughs> Well, we've got we've got uh, an ability to do all kind of athletics all around the mansion compound, and these kids take advantage of it. But that's kind of uh, you know we we, we have to learn when we're dealing with the young kids. They may put finger paint on the on the wallpaper in the state dining room. We got to oh. troubleshoot. They may do this. They may do that. So it's kind of a constant effort to, to keep to keep one step ahead of them. There was one that was in the bowl on top of the sideboard in the dining room. Yeah. Which one was that? That was Mamie. Was that Mamie? 
Well, actually, we ended up getting both uh, when you all came, when Brian came. But the um, the the reason that happened, the last time there was a baby in the mansion was over 50 years ago, and they took a picture uh, of the governor's then baby son in there. So when we came in, we put Mason in and got him to, to do a picture, and then they both jumped in when when Brian was down a few months ago. So well, governor, you're going to have a ball. just the trust punch me, you're going to have a hard time. It's you ball. work a lot now, and people are helping you. When they start having games and after school activities, you're going to have a hard time running press conferences knowing they're playing baseball, golf, soccer, football, whatever. Oh, no, no, no. We, we will not be scheduling press conferences during any of their games. I'll make sure that, I, that I'm at the game. We'll, we'll figure out a way to make that work. You will be the only parent with a police escort uh, to, to Little League. You know what? Uh, we were talking about this earlier. We've actually, because your son, Mason, who obviously gets his athletic prowess from your wife, is so good at golf. We've, we've put together a side-by-side -side comparison of Mason at three with a very young Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, when he was a little boy, uh, showed up on, I believe, the Mike Douglas show. Yeah. And the, look you at know, that. when Whoa. you look at it, it wow. is just stunning the similarities look between your child life. and Tiger Woods, who lives in Jupiter, Florida. Do you have a monitor there, Governor? I know, but they did show it to me before I got on, and so, you know, it's pretty neat to see. I mean, I don't think there's anyone that's been a, a better golf prodigy than Tiger. He's a very special okay. guy. Um, but you never know. I mean, you know, when they when they start, I think golf, if you start young, it really does help because yep. it builds the muscle memory. I didn't start playing until I was in my mid-20s after my baseball career was over. I had the hand-eye coordination, but it is a little bit different swing. Mm -hmm. He's very comfortable with just getting that club face on the ball and, and giving it a ride, and so we look Look forward to seeing what he can do in the well, future. And he's comfortable being on television. I mean, he does yeah. totally natural. Yeah. <laughs> and Governor, we wanted to put Brian did play some golf oh. with President Bush, and we wanted to compare his swing. Oh, to oh you, you're dead. <laughs> we did not want to compare my swing. Yours is not terrible. bad. It's not bad. I am so I, stiff. It's not bad, but I think yeah. Mason might I, be better. I, I saw. I saw. They showed me that before too. I, uh, Brian, I think you got. I think you got good technique. I mean, I, I would dog you if you didn't. I, I, I was. Uh, I think it was a good swing. Uh, listen, he's wired he's, up. He's very positive. He thinks I might be a potential voter. There so you go. he knows. It might be I a, think it all worked out well you, for you. There you go. You're doing okay. All right. all right, Governor. Thanks for the kind words. All right. Uh, so we got to talk about politics. We talked about dogs, and we talked about his life. That's right. Uh, can we have Mason just wave goodbye if the governor is still there? I guess. All Say right. Goodbye to the camera. Bye, yeah. Mason. Wait. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, honey. It's Very early. Good. Have a good weekend, Governor. Thank you.